The Wasserfall was a German-guided supersonic surface-to-air missile project of World War II. With the increasing Allied bombing of Germany, new methods were needed to bring down the enemy bombers. The methods currently used, the anti-aircraft guns and fighter aircraft, were somewhat effective, but costly in ammunition and fuel expended, lost pilots and airframes. Thus, the guided anti-aircraft rocket was envisioned. One of these, perhaps the most ambitious, was the Wasserfall or Waterfall. The basic body shape had been worked out by early 1943, and was basically the same shape as the larger. Dvarokit. The early test models of it were running by March 1943, with a more advanced version being tested later in July 1943. Since the Wasserfall was to have to stand ready for launching at a moment's notice, and it would have to stay fueled for possibly months on end, the liquid oxygen slash alcohol fuel system could not be used. Instead, a special mixture called salve was used, which contained 90% nitric acid and 10% sulfuric acid. It ignited automatically when mixed. Pressurized nitrogen was used to force the fuels into the combustion chamber, with rupture discs being fitted between the nitrogen tanks and in the pipelines. Several safety features were incorporated to the Wasserfall launch procedure. One of these was that the rupture disc in the oxidant line was lower than the one in the fuel line, this was to ensure that an excess of oxidant was in the combustion chamber first, thus preventing a fuel-rich explosion. Another safety feature was that an explosive starter valve was fitted in the pressurized nitrogen tank, this could be explosively closed to allow the nitrogen to escape into the atmosphere in case combustion did not occur upon firing. In the first version of the Wasserfall, the wings were longer and less swept than the later versions. Also, the four wings located at the rocket's midbody were offset by 45 degrees from the tail fins. This was thought to aid in the prevention of aerodynamic shielding of the steering mechanisms by the wings of the tail fins, but later wind tunnel tests proved this unnecessary. The second design was slightly larger, and the wings were smaller and sharply swept back. The final version was similar to the second but it was 27% smaller, to help conserve materials which were scarce in the last days of the war. The guiding system consisted of a ground operator, who steered the Wasserfall missile to the target by use of a joystick by line of sight. The missile was gyroscopically controlled in roll, pitch and yaw, and could be controlled from the ground via radio link in azimuth and elevation. This was achieved by the four graphite rudders placed in the rocket exhaust at the slower starting speeds, and later by the four air rudders mounted on the tail once higher speeds were reached. There was also a proposed radar control system, known as Rhineland, which consisted of a radar set, direction finder set, comparator computer and a control transmitter. The radar set was to track the targets and then trigger a transponder aboard the Wasserfall missile. Then the signal from the transponder would be received by the direction finder set, thus establishing the azimuth and elevation of the missile. The information would then be fed into the comparator computer, where it was compared to the target information obtained by the radar. At this point, the necessary corrections were calculated and then relayed to the control transmitter to bring the missile into the radar beam, and once in the beam, the Wasserfall would ride up the beam to the target. Another proposed method was to use two radar sets that employed rotating dipoles giving conical scans, so that if the missile was off track, it would receive a modulated signal to bring it back on target. It was felt, using either radar system, that because of the supersonic speed of the Wasserfall, the radar system would be inadequate to control the missile when it got to within a few miles of the target, so a proximity or infrared homing system would take over near the end of the flight. Originally, the warhead was to contain 100 kilograms of explosive, but this was later increased to 306 kilograms including a liquid explosive to increase the explosive diameter. Detonation could be achieved either by remote control or by a proximity fuse. The Wasserfall's purpose was to bring down enemy bombers by a large blast area effect, conceivably several bombers could be brought down by each missile. The original intent was to set up Wasserfall anti-aircraft batteries to defend all German cities with a population over 100.000, which would come to approximately 200 Wasserfall batteries, deployed in three lines about 80 kilometers. Also, 
given up to 300 missile batteries, it was possible to defend all of Germany from enemy bomber attacks. For this grandiose plan, 5,000 missiles would be needed monthly, and each missile was estimated to take 500 man-hours to complete. The first Wasserfall site could have been set up as early as November 1945, with a total of 20 more sites set up within an additional four months with 100 Wasserfalls available for each site. It was also estimated that production figures would reach 900 missiles per month by March 1946. Although various components had been tested as early as 1943, the first launch did not take place until February of 1944 near Piedmont. The missile did not reach supersonic speed on this first test, only reaching a height of about 7,000 meters, but the second launch reached a speed of 2,772 kilometers per hour in vertical flight. By July of the same year, seven more missiles had been fired, and by early January of 1945 a further 17 had been launched. Out of the 25 fired, 24 had radio control, and of these, 10 failed to operate properly. Originally it had been planned to allow the Wasserfall to be anchored by four explosive bolts, which would be sheared off upon full thrust being reached, but a few mishaps occurred when one or more of the bolts did not release properly. On January 22, 1945, a status report on the Wasserfall launches had been sent stating that there had been some problems with the rocket engines in the first tests, but that these had since been overcome. Development was to be ceased on February 26, 1945, although a small amount of work was still carried on after that time on the Wasserfall project. After the war Albert Speer, Germany's Reich Minister of Armaments and War Production claimed. To this day, I am convinced that substantial deployment of Wasserfall from the spring of 1944 onward, together with an uncompromising use of the jet fighters as air defense interceptors, would have essentially stalled the Allied strategic bombing offensive against our industry. We would have well been able to do that, after all, we managed to manufacture 900 V-2 rockets per month at a later time when resources were already much more limited. In contrast, some military experts have argued that it would not have been possible for Germany to have fielded Wasserfall batteries before its defeat due to the extensive development work needed, and the project continued for too long due to bureaucratic inertia in the German military and the sense of desperation among the German leadership. They have judged that the missiles would have probably proven ineffective in combat as they would not have been fitted with proximity fuses which Germany never fielded and their guidance system was impractical. In reality the Wasserfall was only one of several competing missile systems which the Luftwaffe ordered to be developed despite lacking the resources needed to complete or field them during the war. But the Wasserfall can be seen as the grandfather of the anti-aircraft missile, as shortly after the war the US developed the successful Nike anti-aircraft missile, with the help of Dr. Werner von Braun at White Sands in the New Mexico desert. The project delivered the United States' first operational anti-aircraft missile system, the Nike Ajax, in 1953. A great number of the technologies and rocket systems used for developing the Nike Ajax were reused for a number of functions, many of which were given the Nike name after Nike the goddess of victory from Greek mythology. The missile's first stage solid rocket booster became the basis for many types of rocket including the Nike Hercules missile and NASA's Nike smoke rocket, used for upper atmosphere research. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.